Hi, I'm Colin Smith from PhotoshopCafe.com, and thanks for joining me for my lab. This is part two of a three-part lab on compositing in Photoshop for beginners. In part one, we cut out all the objects. So please check that out, or you can open your assets folder, and I have some that I've cut out for you, which are ready for you to begin working on this part. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna assemble our composite. We're gonna build a background plate, and we're gonna bring all our elements in, position them, and size them. And then in part three, we're gonna add our realism, adding things like rim lights, shadows, atmosphere, colors, different things like that. So without further ado, let's get started right now. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our background. So let's open up our background image. This is where we're gonna be building our background plate. Our background plate is where all the compositing happens. So what we wanna do is we wanna replace the sky. And there's a great new feature inside of Photoshop called Sky Replace, and let's use it right now. So we're gonna choose the Edit, and then we're gonna go down to Sky Replacement. And this is gonna detect the sky and replace it. Now, when you first open it, you're gonna to have to load in some skies. So if you click the arrow, you'll see this little cog. Click on the cog and choose Append Default Skies. And Adobe gives you a library of skies to get you started. Now, of course, you can bring your own skies in if you choose to import skies. So we're gonna use the ones that come with Photoshop. And let's click, notice we've got the blue skies. And we've got all different types. We've got sunsets. We've got spectacular skies. And notice as we click on here, we can change the different skies. So we've got all kinds of different options. What we're going to use on today, though, is we're going to go down and we're going to select this one. Because this has got just the right amount of kind of drama for us. Great, and let's just click. And notice you have some other options here too. We can shift the edge. And then this kind of gives you, you know, it blends it in or fades it in more depending on the setting. See that? And we're going to take it down. I want to have a reasonably sharp edge there. I don't want it fading too much. And then we can also fade that edge here. See how that just kind of gives you that haze on the horizon? So a little bit of that's nice. And then we can also adjust the sky brightness. I might make it a little bit brighter. And we could make it warmer or cooler. We can make it a little bit warmer. That's looking quite nice. And that's actually looking pretty natural. And then of course, you know, we have other options here where we can adjust the foreground elements here to match the lighting of the sky. So this is good. And under the options, we're gonna choose new layers click OK. Now I want to change the aspect ratio of this particular image. So we're going to make it more square, maybe a little bit taller, more Instagram kind of shape. And I'm going to show you something nice about the replace sky, where this will enable us to do this. So what we want to do is choose the crop tool. And very important, where it says delete cropped pixels, turn that off. Let's drag the side. We're making this a little bit more narrow. Same with this side. Now we're gonna crop this larger than what you see on the screen. So let's click and drag up. Hit the Enter key. And you'll see that we've got this transparent area at the top. This could oppose a little bit of a problem, but the nice thing about the skies, if you look at the sky here, we've got more sky than what we've got in the mask. So what that means is we're just gonna select that mask. And if we paint with white, we can start to reveal more of that sky. So let's hit the D key to reset the colors and that'll give us white as the foreground. Tap the B key for brush. We're gonna select our brush. And let's go to a medium hardness. So I'm gonna take it to about 50% hardness. And I'm gonna hit the bracket key I'm hitting the right bracket key to make this bigger. Now, making sure we're painting on the mask and we're in normal blending mode, 100% opacity, as we paint, we can see that sky comes back in. 
Now, if you see that seam there, what we want to do is just be careful with the brightness and the temperature. We also want to click and mask those as well. And of course, if you didn't change those settings, there would be nothing there to mask. So what we've done is we've clicked those masks and now we've got everything looking nice and we've blended it into this new aspect ratio and we've created our sky. Excellent. So the next thing we want to do is we want to add this background element. So we're going to go and you'll notice this particular image here. Let me just drag it from the library in here, or you can use file open if you're bringing it in from your disk. And we want to position this somewhere so it kind of fades into the background. And this is what's inspiring the kid to want to be an astronaut. So let's hit enter. And what we want to do is we want to put this behind the hill. And one of the nice things that we can do here is if we just drag this below there, notice what we're doing is we're taking advantage of this mask in the sky and it's clipping. Hold the Alt or the Option key to make sure it clips. If it's not clipping, Alt or Option, click, and notice now it clips it to that mask underneath and it enables us to blend that in. So let's reposition it. Notice because we've clipped it, we can move it however we want. I'm going to put it about there, but we still need to get rid of this white background. Let me show you another technique. With our layer selected, go down to where it says Effects, tap, and at the very top, you'll see Blending Options. Click on Blending Options, and it'll bring up the layer styles. What we're going to do is use Blend If. So our top layer here, we want to hide white. If you look here, there's a gradient, there's white. Drag that across to the left and notice white disappears. It's got a jaggy edge. We want to smooth that transition. Hold down Alt or the Option and see this arrow. This will enable us to split that arrow. And now we can drag out the left and the right separately. And this gets us a good transition. Click OK. And now we've got a background element in place. Excellent. Now we want to bring in our other elements. So I'm just going to choose File Open. OK, so I'm going to grab all the elements that we extracted and click Open. And now these are going to open in Windows. So we want to combine them. Let me show you a little trick. If we choose the Window option and go under Arrange, we can go down here and we can tile all of these vertically, horizontally. Why don't we do a four up option? And now we can start to see these are the different things that we've cut out. We know this is our landscape area that we've prepared. So why don't we drag these in one at a time? So let's click on the dog. Now we want to combine them. Just drag the dog into this document release. Don't worry if it's too big. We'll fix this later. And let's just hit the X to hide that. Select our boy. Drag our boy in. Go back there. Just hit that little X. We've got our leash. Hit the little X. Notice we've got two left. Let's go to the rocket. Now we want to drag this into the tab. Watch this. Make sure we select this. Move up into the tab. Now the window that we're going into will appear. Don't let go yet. Go into the middle and release. And now we've got our rocket ship. And we can hit the X to close that up. And now we've got all the elements that we want within our document. So now we want to resize these and start to play around with them. So what I'm going to do is I want to move them all to the top though. So with the rocket selected, let's go down to the dog, click holding down the shift key, and this will select all four layers. And we're going to click and drag them up above. So this is going to take them above the sky. And let's just hide that. So this is our background area now. We just close that. And now we're going to start to work on our elements. So let's just hide all of those. And we're going to start with our boy. Notice that eye icon enables us to show it or hide it. 
Great. So what we want to do now is we want to resize him. With the layer selected, you'll see the little white box around there. Hit Control T. And that's Command T on Mac. And this brings up Free Transform. If we drag on one of these corners, this enables us to resize it. And we can drag to reposition by dragging anywhere in the middle. So let's size our boy. Since this is the hero in the image, we want to make sure that everything conforms to the size or the scaling that we set for our boy. So we're going to put him here on the path and just hit the enter key to apply. Now, sometimes you might see these little, see those little uh, lines there that can sometimes appear. What you want to do is select on the mask, grab a lasso tool, and this is just a good way to make sure you get a good clean selection. Just go around the edge. You don't have to get too close, but we just want to just make sure that we're selecting this. And see that little box there on the outside? We want to get rid of that. Command Shift I to inverse that selection, and then just hit the delete key, and that'll get rid of those edges. The other way you can do it is just to choose a black brush. Notice we've got black there as the foreground color. And with a black brush, you can paint to get rid of those edges as well. Great. All right, let's resize our dog. So let's turn the dog on. Control T for free transform. And sometimes these handles can get really big. If you hit Control zero, that's Command zero on Mac, this will zoom out so you can see the bounding box handles. Let's just drag these down. And we want to reposition our dog. You can zoom in if you want while that's selected, just using that scroll wheel and the alt or the option key. Let's size the dog. And don't worry, you know, follow along with the workbook. We'll give you all the steps here and the keyboard shortcuts. I've written all of those down for you. Great, I want to flip the dog so he's facing the boy. So we're going to right click and choose flip horizontal. Now the dog is facing the boy. Okay, let's position them. Notice that little line appeared. Same thing I was telling you about. So just good practice is to just go around there. Let me zoom in so I can show you that. See that? Sometimes the edge of those masks show. So we're just going to go around here and just make sure that we get rid of all of that. Command Shift I, well that would be Select Inverse, hit Delete, Control D to deselect. And what we're doing is we're just kind of cleaning that up. Great. Couple more things to add in here. Why don't we get our rocket ship? Control T or Command T, and we can resize that. And by the way, if it's not scaling proportionally, just to hold down the Shift key, but by default, it should scale proportionally. And we're just going to position this on the back of the dog. It's looking pretty good, maybe a little big. There we go. And to nudge this, just tap the arrow keys on your keyboard and you can nudge this one pixel at a time to get a more precise scaling. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to put the rocket under the dog. So what we're going to do is just click and drag down underneath the dog here. And let's name this dog so we know what's on our layers. Let's name this one rocket. Double click. And if you want to make sure you're on the right layer, just click. Uh, that's our dog there. This is why we should name our layers. <laughs> and so this one would be the boy. So let me just double click on there, change that to boy. What we're going to do is we're going to put all the dog parts together. So let's take this rocket, drag it underneath the dog. And then I'm going to hold the shift key and select. So I've got both of these layers selected that make up the dog. And I want to put that into a group. Control G, or that would be Command G on Mac, we'll put it into a group and we'll call it dog. And this just makes it easy for us to remain organized. Now we want to strap this onto the dog, so let's click the eye icon. 
Control zero will fit us in here. And we want to bring this area in. I just want to make sure that we clean up those edges. Good practice to just do this all the time. Command shift I delete. There we go. Now what we want to do is let's take this harness and put it inside the dog group. So just click and drag. You'll see this little blue line will appear, not the square, but the line underneath the dog. And now we've got our harness. right there inside the dog group. So I can hide all of the dog group together or I can show them or I can move that group so they all move together. So let's get this harness set up. So why don't we zoom in and remember the space bar enables me to move around. Hit control T once again for free transform and we're gonna flip this vertical. So right click, choose flip vertical and grab the corner to scale it. Actually, we want to go that way. There we go. And so what we want to do is drag that about there. It's pretty close. That's just pretty, very close. Let's go down here and maybe make it a little bit smaller. And so what we need to do now is we need to make this fit the shape that we're going on. So what we're going to do is right click with that free transform. We're still in free transform, which is control T right click and choose warp. And now that we've got warp, we can click on a corner here and we can change that. So this is just kind of wrapping around there. Notice that we can do these kinds of things and click up there. And that's looking pretty good. Now, if you want to get more precise adjustments, if you hit the Alt or the Option key, you can actually split these warps. See that? So we can Alt or Option enable us to split it. And then we can go in and we can move some parts independently from the other parts. I'm just going to take that one a little too far. And let's do the same up here. Let's pull that out a little and then hit Enter to apply. All right, we're getting close. Now we want to just kind of make this fit. Easy way to do that is to just select that mask, grab the brush, B for brush, make sure we've got black selected because remember black takes away. And let's make this a hard edge brush. Now remember, control, option, drag up or down to change the hardness, left and right to change the size. And if you're on Windows, you're gonna be hitting Alt right drag with your mouse. All right, then we're just going to paint over there because we're painting onto the mask with black. It's going to hide it in those areas. So we're going to put it there. Same with here. So we don't even have to worry about trying to get this perfect. We can just simply paint away the part we don't want. Now we don't want both sides of this harness. So let me just hit the left bracket key is another way to make this smaller. And I'm just painting along the edge there. And it might take a little bit of practice for you to get that. But it's not too hard. There we go. Now we're just making that strap fit. Now there's other things that we're going to do here to make it a little bit more believable. And in fact, what we're going to do right now is we're going to do that. We're just going to add a little shadow under there just to make this look believable. So what I want to do is I want to add the shadow underneath the harness, but on top of the dog and the rocket. So let's create a new layer. So hold down the control key. That would be command on Mac, control on Windows, and create a new layer. And this will create a layer underneath. And we'll call this one shadow. Great. Now what we want to do is we want to paint a shadow to make this look more believable. I almost feel like I want to just kind of bring that rocket a little bit closer though. So I'm just using those arrow keys just to kind of nudge that in. There, that's going to be better. And let's choose our shadow layer. Grab a brush. Now what we want to do is grab our brush tool. We want black as our foreground color. Let's go to the top. 
we're going to take our hardness down. We're going to create a nice soft brush. Let's drop our flow to a really low number, like even four. By the way, if you hit the shift zero four very quickly, that'll get us to 4%. Let's do zero six for 6%, maybe 6% is better. Okay, let's go there. And then what we're going to do is now we're going to start to paint. I'm going to take the opacity down to maybe 50. And now what we're doing is we're just painting in the area here where this rocket would be meeting the dog. And we're going to get a shadow in there. In fact, that shadow is going to get very, very dark where the two objects meet in the crevasse. And see how it starts to just make this look a little bit more believable. We'll do more of the shadows in part three. Now, what we want to do is paint under here. And so this is the shadow of the harness. Watch what happens when we start to do this. See how it starts to look now that the harness has some dimension. And this is how we can add dimension by painting with some shadow. See that? And this is what starts to add the re realism and believability, which we're going to be doing in part three. Right now we're just assembling things, but that gives you a little bit of a taste. What we want to do though is we want to put one of these ears behind the rocket. So it looks like the rockets between his ears. So let's go to the dog layer. Make sure we've got that dog layer selected. Select that mask. Now, once again, we want to go to a hard edge and let's turn our opacity all the way up and turn our flow all the way up. And we're just going to paint on that ear. And see what it's doing now is it's putting that ear. So now this is between the ears. Let's go back to the shadow, but we're going to create a new shadow because I want this one between the dog and the rocket. Grab our brush. Once again, drop that flow down really low. Opacity down about 50-ish. We want the soft brush. And I'm just going to paint under that ear there. And see what I'm doing? I'm just dropping a little bit of shadow onto that rocket. So it's adding depth. See that? And that starts to make it look a little bit more believable. And then if we zoom out, we're looking pretty good. All right, so that was part two. So what we learned here was how to scale and position objects. We got a little bit of a touch on how to combine objects together with that harness and the rocket and dropping in that little bit of a shadow can really just kind of bring things together and make it look realistic. We also replaced the sky. They've done quite a bit of work. Join me in part three. And in part three, we're gonna be adding the realism. We're gonna add atmosphere. We're gonna add light. We're gonna add shadow. And really that's a fun part. We're gonna do a little bit of color grading. So don't forget, if you've got questions, drop the questions in there. Um, and also you can download the different assets so you can follow along at your own pace. So I'll see you in part three. Thank you.